All right, welcome back. And uh, let's see here. I've removed the plugs and wires. And uh, you know, in order to, to do that, I recommend that you remove the coil packs and get them out your way so you can work a little bit more easier. To me, it's just better to do, in my opinion. Uh, you don't have to remove the heat shield. Uh, that's unnecessary. Of course, you disconnect your um, your temp sensor and um, you know you start going to work. I start on the back first because they're more hellacious, of course. All right, I'm going with the iridiums. Um, I'm going to gap these at 40 per James Brewer. And here's the uh, part number four. And uh, yeah. Check these out. These are 10.5 ZZP um, wires. They're thicker, fatter, girthier. Look at the factories. So I'm done away with those, but I keep them just, just in case. But um, I'm gonna go with these right here and these, these right here just warm my heart, man. And I know it's gonna warm her heart. Literally, in a good way though. Hopefully, I'm blowing shit install up. All those. Um, then I put the coil packs and everything back. Then I'll put in the intake because that's how I want to do it. I mean, you know, it's just the best way. I've also installed the the math. Well, I'm sorry, the map sensor uh, extension. This is from Billet. They make damn good products, especially for LS. Well, they probably make it for all kind of cars, but the LS uh, motors. Man, they make good stuff for our, for our motors, man. Excellent. This is nice and long right here. This is more than enough room, which is exactly what I want because this wire is gonna go around to the back to here. I've already installed it on the intake. Uh, it'll be plugging in here, so that wire be coming in. And yes, I did a makeshift uh, shoddy, but very workable and usable fitting. You know, I tried to mimic this right here. I know I didn't do such a good job on it, but you know, I wanted to uh, put the map sensor in there and they even have a screw in there just like on the other intake. And uh, I even dremeled out the hole where the O-ring can actually, you know, click into place like it does on this one. Okay. NGK spark plugs are in along with the new ZZP 10.5 wires and they look great. All right. Installing this damn thing. Let's go ahead and install this. First, you want to get all the stuff out of the way, like your map sensor, harness wire that's long as shit. Um, you know, you get this type of stuff out of the way. This intake is it's pretty big, it's pretty dirty. Uh, let's see. This is, this is the PCV for the, uh, for the catch can. Move all this shit out of the way. Get ready to have it nice and ready. Please remember to move your, your tape and stuff out of the way. Can you imagine here firing this shit up and leaving this in here? Man. Check your port holes, everything looks good. Let's get ready to roll. You want to be very careful with putting this shit in here because your oil pressure sensor sits here. I came in, set it in, and kind of slowly just start setting it up, pushing it in, and at the same time, just hoisting this over the back side of it and being very careful of this uh, oil pressure sensor. So what we do, we come in this way and we drop it just like this. We look, we're looking at the wires and stuff and we're, we're scooting. We're, we're pulling this up over it very carefully like this. Making sure it's not up on, up on anything smashing anything. And 
here. You want to be careful. Hold it here. You look and see which, where you're going. So right here, we're coming over here, and we're just kind of maneuvering this. Bring it back a little bit, just like that. This fuel line here was underneath these two. So what I did, I just, since this is nice and rubbery, I just essentially just fished it underneath these two hoses, all right? And then just brought it back out. And it's sitting on top of this harness. Okay, so bring it back. Look at your oil pressure sensor from here. And it's clear. My fuel, main fuel line, it's right here, and I'm good with that. So I can be able to do whatever the hell I want to do with it. All right, so it's in. I don't have it bolted down, um, cause I want to make sure everything is right, just in case I have to take it back out. Everything is, seems to be pretty good. This is real, real close right here. But once I bolt it down, it could settle down into a spot. That red line is the brake booster. And to be going on to this right here, that's the brake booster fitting. Waiting on my alternator. But everything fits. Fuel rail. Let's look at that fuel rail. Look at that. Doesn't even touch it. Oh yeah, there we go, catch can, here's your fittings. In order to install this, you're going to have to have a, um, a, a bracket. What I did, I went to Home Depot and picked up this one and a, one and a half inch wide, 36 long, even though I don't need, I don't need all this right here, you know. And uh, it's one eighth thick. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a bracket out of this. So, yeah, this is a four and a half here. That's where the hole is gonna be at. That's the line where it kind of flans out. And then it's gonna drop down right here. And this is like two, I put two and a quarter. And all this is uh, four and a half, this whole thing here. Well, in order to make it uh, more of a right angled uh, bracket, you have to cut through here. Just cut in a little bit. And I'm going to be using my favorite tool in the whole wide world that got me through all this mess. The Dremel. Got a little bit of a cutting wheel here. So let's get it started. And I think I can deal with that right there. The two halves is gonna hang off right here, okay? So you're gonna take this, and you're gonna mark this. And it's gonna be nice and hot. Lean on it a little bit. got a nice little bracket it's a little crack and a little seam here from bending now of course if I bent this back the other way it will break but that's not going to happen because I'm going to put JB well here and make it back strong again I'm going to drill my hole here for the for the bolt that's in there and the two holes for this so essentially it'll be just like this so let's just take a look over here. See this bolt, this bracket, you're gonna have a hole for this bolt. See that? Where this line is coming in right here, I draw a line here, go under here, cut just a little bit so it can bend down this way. It comes up like this and it flattens out and then it drops down. And I can just turn around and feel, 
fill in some JB Well here and definitely some JB Well there. And that'll be after I drill the holes. This tape will be a true measurement of what I have here. So what I did, I just essentially, before I drilled the holes, I put a tape over it, and then I'm gonna mark it on this tape. All right, so what you do, you take the uh, measurement, but basically over your bracket here, and then you basically just punch a hole here in there, take this back off, just basically mark through there, like a fool, and you got your hole. All right, and you have your holes right here. Here's the finished product of the bracket. As you can see, I put the JB well here, filled it in in the cracks, really good. What I did, I scuffed it up a little bit. I'm gonna paint this black, but it's gonna go right here. Let's see. It'll be right here. It's right in the hole. Looks like it's a little... There we go. So, you want to check this baffle and make sure there's no, you know, shavings or no pieces in it. Go ahead and tighten this down. So, that's my catch can project. Uh, so, there's the catch can. There's the nice bracket. Tucked under here, bolted in. Comes out real nice. Uh, sits pretty good. It's routed nice and clean. Underneath the uh, fuel line, comes out here. It, this, here's your uh, out or your PCV. I'm gonna let that dangle. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, but the catch can is installed and it fits pretty good. It's nice and sturdy. So that's how you install it. 